Joe Lieberman's fate lies in the hands of his fellow Senate Democrats. Tomorrow they will vote by secret ballot on whether or not to strip their colleague of his chairmanship of the Homeland Security and Government Affairs Committee. At issue in our fourth story in the countdown, Lieberman's vocal support of John McCain during the presidential campaign, for speaking at the Republican National Convention, and more importantly, for some of what Lieberman said in that speech. When colleagues like Barack Obama were voting to cut off funding for our American troops on the battlefield, <clears throat> John McCain had the courage to stand against the tide of public opinion. As we know, Obama voted against a version of the bill that didn't include a timeline for withdrawal and for the one that did. In the meantime, Senator Tom Carper from Delaware today became the fourth member of the U.S. Senate to publicly condemn Lieberman. He told the Hill newspaper that he would not rule out stripping him of the coveted gavel. Quote, there need to be consequences and they cannot be insignificant. Carper joins Patrick Leahy, Bernie Sanders, who doesn't get to vote, and Byron Dorgan, all of whom have gone off on Lieberman on the record. Dorgan called Lieberman's actions as the chair of a significant committee unacceptable. As for Barack Obama, the president-elect has said he'd like Lieberman to continue caucusing with the party. He has not, however, weighed in on the chairmanship issue. And since he resigned his Senate seat, he won't be voting anyway. Time now to bring in Chris Hayes, Washington editor of The Nation, and good evening, Chris. Hey, David. How you doing? Good. Is the secret ballot good news for Joe Lieberman since basically it's not cool to support him, or is it bad because this way detractors can stay anonymous? It's a tough call, but I think ultimately it probably is good news. I mean, the, the Senate is, is called quite aptly the world's most exclusive club, and the internal caucus politics are the place where that... Uh, that phrase is probably its most accurate. I mean, whatever information we're getting through leaks and some public pronouncements from a few senators um, doesn't compare to the amount of jockeying uh, and handshaking and quid pro quos that are going on inside the caucus. And my sense is what a secret ballot does ultimately is essentially provide a little bit of insurance towards uh, Lieberman's colleagues, who I think are probably going to uh, do the clubby thing and, and, and vote to keep him where he is. Well, then based on what you are saying, are you suggesting that Lieberman perhaps is engaged in some horse trading in order to make sure he has enough numbers to survive? Look, I mean, he's he's a veteran uh, lawmaker, and this is this is what they, this is what they do for a living. I don't know what's being traded. I do know that you know calls are clearly being made, colleagues are being lobbied, etc. I, I think ultimately, right? I mean, there's two ways to view this. One is is that Lieberman really did a has uh, has kind of betrayed the party uh, substantively around the issue of the Iraq War for a long time before the campaign, but really quite acutely in the campaign and specifically during his speech at the RNC. The other way to look at it, and the way that I'm sure Lieberman is selling his colleagues is, you know, I'm basically one of you guys, and uh, we, we don't want to rock the boat too much, and I'll make a lot of trouble for you if you kick me out. And I think that that kind of clubby imperative that tends to rule the Senate, I think, unfortunately, um, is, is what's going to prevail. Barack Obama told Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid that he wants Lieberman to stay in the Democratic caucus, and he's staying out of the chairmanship battle. If Obama got over it, shouldn't the rest of the caucus as well? Well, I don't think it's a question of, of getting over it. I mean, th th these are adults and, and they're professional politicians. And professional politicians have to go through a lot of uh, insult trading and all sorts of nastiness back and forth, just as a matter of course, and they get over it. The, the question is one of incentives and the question is one of accountability. Now, it, it, it's also important to note there's two distinct issues here. There's the stripping of the chairmanship and there's whether Lieberman will caucus with the Democrats. The stripping of the chairmanship is what is on the table in this vote. Whether Lieberman, in a fit of peak, then reacts to that by choosing not to caucus with the Democrats would be a violation of a pledge he made to the voters of Connecticut. That, that is for Lieberman to decide. But what Obama said was strictly had to do with him caucusing with the Democrats, and that's a distinct question from whether he retains his gavel. NBC's own uh, Capitol Hill producer is citing sources familiar with negotiations who say that Democrats are expected to let Lieberman keep his chairmanship and seniority, but give up the gavel on the subcommittees he chairs. Wow, losing the gavel on a subcommittee, that's rough stuff. I mean, good grief, is this really punishment that they're meeting out? 
No, they're not meeting out punishment. I mean, that's a slap on the wrist. And I think uh, a useful analogy here is this amounts to a political bailout. I mean, Joe Lieberman pursued a very high risk, high leverage strategy this election year in which he bought a lot of stock in John McCain. And that has not borne out. And I think bailout fever essentially has 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 gripped Washington so much that what we're going to see is those losses, which would under normal circumstances incur to Joe Lieberman, essentially be written off the way that we're seeing losses for financial entities being written off and Lieberman's going to skate away. Now, the problem with this and the problem with all bailouts is it creates what economists call moral hazard, which is it takes away a disincentive for this kind of activity in the future. And I think that that's a real concern going into some tough legislative fights, there's, that, that there's not going to be the incentive there to retain some, some loyalty that's going to be necessary to get an agenda passed. And certainly not a confidence booster in terms of the discipline it may take in the future. In any case, so Chris Hayes of The Nation. Chris, thanks for your time tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you, David.